everybody. Welcome to MS Confidential, a monthly webcast series consisting of candid conversations about navigating the chaos of living with multiple sclerosis. My name is Lisa Foote, and my role today, as usual, is to help with any questions that you want to ask the panelists. So if you want to put it in the chat box, please do so, and we'll get to that in about 20 minutes or so. It depends on this topic tonight. Um, also, because this conversation is meant to be candid and filtered, it also means sometimes it gets intense, maybe colorful, um, but we just want to tell you that up front. So tonight's episode is really about how our panelists view the relationship that they have with their diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, how they see it. And our four panelists, Elizabeth Jameson, Annie Brewster, Jessica Oler, and Kyle Kronick, have a lot to say about this, so I'd like them to introduce themselves. So, hey, Kyle, will you get started? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Kyle Kronick, and I've been living with uh, progressive multiple sclerosis for 10 years now. My name is Jessica, and I've been living with MS for 10 years as well. Hi, I'm Annie Brewster, and I have relapsing remitting MS since 2001, so 20 years now. And I'm going to say, let's hear from Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Jameson, and I've had MS for over 20 years. And I have progressive MS, and um, that's I think I was the one, I, I did, don't think I know, I was the one who came up with the idea of trying to define what MS was to me and to my colleagues here. As I, I felt it's really important, I think, to understand what each of us think MS is to them so we can learn from each other. So that was my idea for the for the program this month. Why? Because I've lived with MS for so long, because I have progressive illness, progressive disease. I'm in a wheelchair, I'm a quadriplegic, and my disease keeps marching forward. I had to, each year I've tried to think of what does MS mean to me? And what really spurred me on was a bulletin, uh, an ad, I mean, about um, involving MS. And it said, um, MS has taken my life from me. MS has robbed me of my marriage. MS has robbed me of my friendship. And it, MS has robbed me of my career. I hate to. So I thought, oh, that's not how I feel about my MS. And every year I feel MS is just a part of me. It's my friend, it's my family. And sometimes it's my friend, sometimes it's. I'm a, I, it's still my friend, but I hate my friend. I feel very various emotions about the disease, and it's okay because I feel like I love myself. So if I have to love my uh, my MS, because MS is a part of me, and I've been thinking a lot about MS is like sitting on my shoulder. And some mornings I'm really upset at my MS, and some mornings I'm neutral about my MS, and other times I feel really proud of my disease. I sometimes I really feel like God, I'm Elizabeth James, and I have this incredible disease. That. Is that your dog, Kyle? Yeah, he muted it. He muted his, his okay. thing. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry if I'm getting distracted. 
but I I could talk about my relationship with my disease and the the years how I thought well I used to think about it as a beautiful peacock sitting on my shoulder and then I went no I think it's maybe a big rock sitting on my shoulder and I have the strength to carry the rock I thought I don't like that I thought, well, maybe the image is, it's one of my family members, where it's family. Sometimes I don't get along with my family members. Sometimes I love them. Sometimes they bore me. It's just a whole myriad of emotions. But I love my family. Mm -hmm. I don't love them all the time. And as long as we don't talk about politics or this and that. So I, I do think more and more I love my MS. And I think it's a, what I'm saying is a very dangerous topic because I, I, it's very emotional what, how people feel about their disease. And I'd love to talk, hear from each of you about what, did, what how you react so my definition of MS that I want to hear what you think about MS. I, I wish I could get on board with you, Elizabeth, and love my MS, but it has robbed me of my, my sense of self. Uh, I am not at all the person that I was 10 years ago, and I'm still a young dude, and I'm constantly asking myself, who, who, who am I these days? Like uh, somebody was asking me the other day, what, what do you like to do for fun? And I used to say like, oh, I love hiking. I love mountain biking. I love going to the beach, but I don't do any of that stuff anymore. So what do I like to do for fun? I still like to go to concerts. I still love music. Uh, but MS has really uh just robbed me of my my sense of who i am and it's it's just constantly changing and it, it's hard to continually process definitely i, I oh go ahead jessica I'll you no, me. go yeah um <laughs> i just want to say that i think that this topic one, at least in, from my perspective, why this topic is so vitally important is because it really brings out the personhood, the person living with the disease. And I think that that is, that's like it, like that's the piece, like we're people, <laughs> we're, we're living people in our own existences, in our shared experiences. And I think that that is the vital piece of all of it. Can you say more? Because I don't get what you're saying. Like when I was listening to you, I just, I don't know, like I was writing because I was just thinking and the, something that really just popped into my head was just how you're, you're a whole human being. And being a person living with multiple sclerosis puts you in the category of being a patient, regardless of how you're um, navigating your disease. Um, and when you're a patient, there's that patient doctor relationship that at least in my experience, kind of strips you of your personhood, <laughs> of your politic and your wants and your desires and how you relate to MS. It's just, you're this person, what medications are you taking? There's no other further conversation. Does that kind of make sense? If not, I'm sorry. That totally makes sense. I have to say like hearing that makes me so sad I, as a doctor. Oh, and no. yet I ha that has been my experience as a patient, but it makes me yeah. so sad as a doctor that that is so not how it should be. And yeah. yeah. 
That's sad. And I feel like we should have a whole conversation, a whole episode about patient doctor relationships. I think we should. Right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, but, but I'm going to like try to bring it back to this. Like what is MS? I think, I think I took it very literally. Like I was like, okay, I have to like think about who is, if MS were a character in my story, what is that character? You know, which is kind of a fun thing to think about. Mm-hmm. And well, first of all, like just my reaction to what you said, Elizabeth, I agree with Kaya, like I'm not there yet. Like I wish I could say, I love my- I want that so bad. I want that. And I love that you feel that, um, but I feel like I'm evolving towards that. So like, and even in the past few days that I've been thinking about like, what is the character of my story? It's changed about five times. So, which is interesting because I think it does change daily. It changes all the time. But I'd say this morning, the one I came up with, which is kind of wacky, but I was like, I think my MS is like an alcoholic father. (laughs) No, I'm serious. Who was like, and I'm not even talking about my dad because I don't even have a good relationship with him. But imagining I had a good relationship with my dad. He was an alcoholic. That caused me a lot of pain and confusion and upset. And coming to terms with myself and sorting myself out. And then, but it was like an alcoholic father who now at this point has like, is in sobriety and maybe it's not permanent, but it's in, he's in sobriety now. And he, we're in a, like a good place and it's brought us closer and it's pushed me to learn stuff about myself. And I feel like I love that part of even though it's been painful living with that alcoholic father, it's also made me a better person and made me think more deeply and have different perspective. And it's tenuous. That's all I'll say. That, that I really like that, Annie, because I, I was telling Elizabeth that I, I see my MS as a set of unwanted twin boys that I just right. woke up and I have twin boys. And they're playfully <laughs> holding on to my legs and holding me down and uh, they're just changing how I live absolutely every way of my life. So, yeah. Uh, and I hate my twin boys. I hate them. <laughs> do you always hate them? I mean, do you sometimes like them a little? Or No, I don't. Yeah, me neither. I'd love to put them up for adoption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like Kyle. You really you're really talking about your intimate relationship with MS. Mm-hmm. Cause intimate relationships are filled with all sorts of emotions. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. relationships with kids. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I like oh. the word I'm intrigued by the word playful. Mm-hmm. It was playful the day one, and uh, since they never let go of my legs, and it's been 10 years, and they've grown, as kids do, uh, it's like I've got two teenage boys holding on to my legs, weighing me down. Yeah. This Mm. is wild to me. I fucking hate MS, and I want to eradicate it. That's my relationship to it. Me too, yeah. I think that's so... (sighs) I'm sorry, what were you going to say, Elizabeth? No, no, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I want to eradicate it. That's my relationship to it. I want to, I don't, if that's even a relationship, is it even, I want, I, I don't even, I make all of my, like, things around MS, the decisions that I make, I'm trying to erase it from my life. Mm. I want nothing to do with it. I hate it. Well, That's my... What? Yes. I, I feel I've lived with my MS for so long and it's taken so much from me. Mm-hmm. I, I can't use my legs or my arms or my fingers. So there's, and now I'm, it's taking my voice. So there's not a lot left, but I also feel like being an artist, it, I really took ownership of my, my MRIs from the doctor 
or of the medical profession. And I decided to turn it, turn it all into my data. And mm -hmm. I decided I got to color what color, what colors mm -hmm. I wanted to of my MS. And mm -hmm. I, and the older I get, the more I don't relate to doctors or my relationship to my doctor. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the, my relationship with myself, mm -hmm. how MS has affected myself and how mm -hmm. I can, I, I feel like MS is part courage and um, danger and um, lots of negative emotions and also some beautiful strength and curiosity and beauty. And I see in so many colors now, I see my, my colors are turquoise and orange and red. And I just, that's why I thought, oh, peacock, mm -hmm. that's the MS is my peacock that is gorgeous and it bites me on my shoulder there it it's full of you know think it pees on my shoulder it <laughs> bites my shoulder and it nips at me and on the other hand when it's beautiful it displays this gorgeous array of colors so i i i think I want to feel that I'm beautiful, courageous, and therefore my my MS is beautiful and courageous, and um, it comforts me to feel that I own my MS, own my medical data, and I feel like I'm in control of my life. I'm not in control of my MS, but I'm living with MS and we're trying to make the best of us. Like my family at Thanksgiving dinner, try to make the best of uh, the drama and, and intrigue of Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. That's what I think MS is. One of the family. I love and that. I love that. I know me too. I aspire to that mindset. Yeah. Yeah, but you I'm old. <laughs> I I've had so many more years with the I disease. Feel I feel like I'm a hundred. You don't look it. You look great, Kyle. Thank goodness. It feels yeah. like each year with MS has been like a dog year. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. Over seven uh, years old, at least. Well, it has been terrible for you. And yeah. there's a lot of pain and grief. And I really want to, I don't want to take that, the horror of MS and what it's done to you away. And I, I think it's been really shitty for you. It has been. It's been shitty for all of us. Uh, I try to make light of it as much as I can uh, and just try to live with some levity. You know, I like I hate I, I, I hate when people are like, let's look for the silver linings. And so I'm not going to try. Yeah. I don't, I'm not yeah. trying to be that. Per that sucks. And I agree with you. Like, it sucks. Yeah. But I also find such inspiration in what you said, Elizabeth, because I think if anyone's you know, suffered from the impact of MS you have, it's hit you hard. And I really admire what you're saying. And I sort of, I'm working towards that because I sort of feel like as much as, you know, it's normal to hate our MS, but ultimately it is part of us. It's not a part of us we're gonna get rid of. And we gotta learn how to live with it and Again, I feel like I'm like leaning to silver liney. I'm not trying to, but I'm just saying like, that's where I come down. I'm like, 
all right, well, what's my alternative? I've got to try to make friends with this. What's my alternative? I don't really have one. So, and I did spend years trying to like wish it away and ignoring it. And that didn't really help me out. So I'm not quite, I'm not where you are, Elizabeth, but I'm trying to get to a place of like, making friends or I love the family dinner because my gosh my family has had some crazy Thanksgiving dinners Absolutely. and I love it so much but you're like get me the fuck out of here you know but mm -hmm. I love you but this is <laughs> but anyway I strive I, I I'm in, I I feel hopeful from what you said and I strive for that and I think because I feel like for me it's like what's the alternative and I like what you said about like taking control back because mm -hmm. we have to find a way to do that. And the only way we can do that is to control our relationship to our disease because we can't make it go away. Mm. Well, I have progressive disease. There's nothing the medical community can do to help me. So far, there's nothing. There's no pill to take. There's nothing that's going to do help me except me and my perception mm -hmm. of disease and I feel like I have to take ownership and I agree with you I don't I think this conversation is very dangerous for me because I don't want that my perception to be interpreted as Susie's sunshine <laughs> oh well you can just wish it away or use mind your um use mind control to make ms so wonderful or a gift as some people say it's just a gift and i go fuck that it's horrible i mean i it's not horrible but it's i, I feel lots of different conflicting emotions but I, I don't want to take away our pain. And it's just, I've lived long enough to have friends who died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Our friends who are in the middle of chemotherapy. And Kyle, you probably have, I have yet to have five friends who've had chemotherapy. Really? And I have, and I've said, it with with them chemotherapy and I feel like well you know it's like life is full of the good the bad and the ugly and I'm blessed for by living as long as I've been able to live the one thing I love about MS again I'm i just don't want people to think of me as Susie Sunshine. But no, I think we won't. <laughs> Pardon? We won't think of you as Susie Sunshine. Thank you. Not. <laughs> but I the thing I love about MS is for me, it's been slow. And mm -hmm. I've been able to adjust with each each thing that MS takes away from me. I can look at it and read stories about people in wheelchairs before I got my wheelchair. So I really had time to adjust. And I think I've been, uh, MS is giving the gift, giving some time to adjust to quadriplegia, to lack of voice. So I feel lucky to disease that is slow versus some cancers that are quick and dirty. MS is slow and dirty. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I love about MS for me, for other people I have other experiences. I feel like mine has been super quick. I feel like I've just been free falling. Yeah and I can't hold on to anything. Yeah, I, I, your reality is horrible. It's tough. I can appreciate your wisdom and your story and your thoughts, Elizabeth. 
Me too. Yeah, I can, I just, um, I mean, I still hate it, <laughs> I know, but I just, I, it's just, I just appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, I just, it's exhausting. I hate it. I don't know. So Jessica, I have a question for you. Oh. Um, <laughs> because you talk about the doctor patient relationship and how you feel like that's strips MS patients of their personhood. And I'm just curious oh. when you feel that way, what, what do you do about that? Um, in the past, I, in those moments in the past, I'm just kind of in the appointments. Um, if that makes sense, because it's all in my experience, and I'm sure all of you can relate to it. It's all a learning experience, right? Um, unfortunately, not all of my experiences, but some of them have not been great experiences. I definitely haven't been treated very well. Um, so in the past, just languages had ha certain language and certain tones have just happened and I'm just already overwhelmed and you're in a neurologist thing and MRIs and multiple sclerosis so there's already a lot of overwhelm happening within me anyway so it just happens you know I have an appointment coming up with my DO um, and now I'm here 10 years later a little bit older he and I have a great working relationship but if if I feel like I'm not being respected or if I feel uncomfortable, I hope that I'm able to at most just use my voice, you know, and just say, if I disagree, just say, oh, I disagree or, oh, I feel this way. So for me, that's just kind of, that's what I hope for myself. So, and that's kind of been my experience. It's been a growing learning experience, if that makes, if that answers um, the individual's question. It's so hard though, right? Because in those relationships, there's that built-in sort of power dynamic of doctor is supposed to be the one who's got the information and is in charge. Yeah. It's like, it's set up to be like, we can't as patients, or we don't, at least I can only speak for myself. I found it very challenging when I wanted to disagree with my physicians and say, that's not going to work for me. Yeah. And that is, you know, you sort of feel like they're telling you what to do and you're supposed to be like the good patient and be like, okay, I'll do that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And going, I mean, and, 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 you know, I wasn't trying to change, I wasn't trying to like, again, like digress at all when I brought it up really earlier in our conversation, but I think that that's all a part of, for me, my relationship to <laughs> multiple sclerosis. It's just challenging and it's hard and I want it to go away. <laughs> like I want it to, I don't want it at all. I hate it. It's a relationship I want to end because for example, it's just always challenging. You know, technically in my head, I need my DO. <laughs> I need I need help. And also I don't agree that infusions are the key to keep me helpful or keep me healthy. And there's the huge like problem, right? And it's right. just very it is stressful and challenging because then it's like, well, where are we now? Because that's where you're trained not saying you're wrong it's just yeah you know it's like I think it's like baby steps um and maybe you know if you can think of like using your voice even if it's in like saying one thing right I mean I'm mm -hmm. just giving myself a pep talk here too but like maybe it's like that taking ownership of, or taking control and and we can only start slowly and maybe part of that is in that patient provider relationship of like saying I'm not, no, I don't think that's the best course for me, but it's yeah. terrifying and hard, but I like what you said about using your voice. And I think, you, you know, Fine. Yeah. yeah, I find it really hard to use my voice. 
this. I find it's really more power to you. <laughs> I don't even. It's really, it's hard. I mean, all of the amazing wisdom you lay down for yourself, Elizabeth. I mean, all of that is just so valuable, so important, right? And it's like, how, it's like, how do you bring that into your doctor's office when it's like, you know, that they aren't there to work in that way? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're there. So to maybe, maybe you can't bring it to your doctor's office. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't like, know how to make the breaks. There's like a know. dependence though that we have, like, like what you said, Elizabeth, is like the medical system can't really do much for me at this point. So I've had to take charge of it myself, which I, yeah, I get. And I think it's admirable. And I think we all need to work towards taking charge of it. But if we're still like, maybe they know something that could help us and we don't know, there's a dependence on them mm -hmm. or their information that, that leaves, you, leaves the patient sort of like, I guess I have to like listen and try to learn and maybe do what they say i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i feel like i'm pulled in so many different directions with doctors because i i go with alternative doctors and then i go i try and mix it with uh modern medicine western medicine and it's so hard to know what the fuck to do thing is with ms you never know what to do no you yes. don't know that's, That's the most horrible thing about MS. Is, that is, that is. You can tell whether it's working or not working. Exactly. It, it's, it's, that is the hardest thing. You never will know if you've done the other thing. Right, would have right. Been, or if you've done nothing, what would have been? You'll never know. Right. I, I know people that have had MS for 40 years that treat their body like shit, drink, smoke, do drugs, and they don't uh, have any visible symptoms really so it's just a lottery it seems yeah. it feels that way i don't know mm -hmm. if i think it's a lottery though but it feels that way mm -hmm. it does feel that way kyle not a good lottery oh yeah not a good lottery. Not one i want to win but i did win it's wild it, it and the, the instability is <laughs> painful but it's just it's I don't know, life it mm -hmm. is life which is wild because you know I'm a, I'm a pretty I'm a pretty positive person you know I really am like but like this MS I'm definitely in this chapter of being like no I actually really dislike it it's taken so mm -hmm. much from me so much you know and I say that like in the larger scope of like my whole self and my whole life and I know there are great things I'm aware of that but I'm like no there, this thing has just, no, I'm, I dislike it and I do constant research, <laughs> constantly reading and I do A, B, and C literally just so I can like make it go away. So, which is tiring, mm -hmm. but. Just um, got that deep, dark part of you that you're displaying it's real i really want to tell you it's it's horrible what it's done for you and it's just what do we do with that what do we do with that darkness mm -hmm. or what what can we do with this bone chilling horrible disease of ms we have to, well, I don't know what we need to do, but I felt I just need to take control of it and decide yeah. what I want to do, which I don't do it brilliantly or even poorly. I've, it just is very hard. It is. That's a great, a great, oh, sorry, a great question you pose though. What do I do or what do we do if other people can relate? What do we do with the darkness? Especially as an artist like you, I'm very, you know. Yeah, like I'm thinking that too. Like, Jessica, like, do you feel it's in, informed your art at all? 
Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, a lot, some of my work, including, you know, being a panelist here, it's directly about multiple sclerosis. Um, long story short, I think that things are all, it's all connected, right? Like you can't, you can try to separate things, but really can, it all comes back to a center. So on some levels, it does, yes. Even conversations like, like Black geography or the Atlantic slave trade, things like that, if we're talking about disease development and stress and lineages and histories, it can all, it does inform it, but so yes and no. Sorry if I didn't even asked you to play. I hope that you know, but it. yes and no is a great response because yeah. it's very conflicting. You know, it's just what yeah. life is about is the yes and no. And do I make sense? No, mm -hmm. because you can't make sense. I mean, we all, none of us really make sense when we're dealing with such intimacy questions. We're yeah. talking about MS and intimacy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's something else. But again, I'm just hearing you in your perspective. You know, I feel very privileged, just like I feel very privileged to hear Kyle and Annie, um, just to hear how you're living with it, what your relationship is to it, even though it may be different than mine, but that's beautiful and that's fine. But I'm just like definitely in this moment of like, no, I fucking hate it. And it's distracting and it's exhausting. And it's like this scary monster above my head that's just looming when all these other wonderful things are happening, but I'm stressed out and I'm afraid because what if everything comes falling down because of this monster that I hate? Like, I don't want it. I want it to die. Okay. I don't want it to die. <laughs> Super well said. That captures it right there. Um, um, did I? Know. Yes. <laughs> wow. It's a very important topic. I think that this topic is like, um, I think for those living with MS, I think that this question really allows us to really speak our truth, which hope it, which will then allow us to like, hopefully let some like stress off our shoulders and to hopefully like, maybe like find some wiggle room for like some solutions so we can just um, hopefully live our lives with some semblance of joy, if not. Complete that's joy. what I've been looking for. So uh, bring joy into my life, whatever yeah. that means. Uh, it can be hard yeah. to find, but uh, that's what I'm searching for. Yes. What I yeah. wanted from MS Confidential is to help build the community of mm -hmm. MS. Because I think we can really understand joy or mm -hmm. darkness. We all mm -hmm. know what this darkness is or mm -hmm. how hard and fatiguing it is dealing with this, uh, both the really, really depth of despair, which yeah. MS makes you feel, face in really deep despair and then pulling yourself out of it because it gets boring. If we're stuck in despair. It's horrible to see to say, but it's, it's boring because you can't live a life yeah. of despair, I, I don't think, and have joy at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's why I so want to enrich the idea of community. Mm -hmm. When I think of when I get, like this weekend, I want I went on vacation to visit my son. So we flew to Utah, mm -hmm. but we went from San Francisco to um, Utah. And it was just horrible for me mm -hmm. um, because I haven't traveled in two years. Mm -hmm. And the amount of I've function 
I've lost in two years is pretty amazing. And it terrified me. I may not be able to travel much longer. I hope I'm wrong, but boy, it was terrifying. And I thought, oh, what, what, who could understand this except you guys? I really wanted to call each of you and say, oh, let me try the despair I felt mm-hmm. on the airplane. Mm -hmm. trying to deal with the aisle chair and being all the pain I was went through being um, loaded onto an aisle chair was Mm -hmm. humiliating and and painful and even though I say I love my MS I do love my MS doesn't mean I'm Miss Sunshine and then I, then I go through funny events like I was at my uh, son's place and they have a dog, my son and his girlfriend, and the dog just loved me and kept smelling my catheter because mm-hmm. it, it's good smelly urine. So mm-hmm. I think he was smelling the garlic mm-hmm. pizza I had the day before. And love the garlic, and I, and they kept trying to get the dog out of my catheter bag, mm. and I they couldn't because it was such beautiful, tasteful garlic smell of my urine, and I mm. thought either I laugh or get humiliated, and I thought I should laugh and think this is a good story to tell of my son's dog who loves my urine. Mm-hmm. I think maybe if that should be a speech at their their upcoming wedding of how wonderful my urine is to some people. There has to be some story to, that should come from this, um, this, episode of my life so I I just think uh, I just trying to what color would I paint this I think it's sort of funny I think I do some color or some um, paintbrush loaded with gorgeous blue Mm -hmm. I just So I'm I'm saying I think I don't want people to think I'm what I'm not. I'm complex, contradictory, and you know, just trying to do the best I can with um, gorgeous urine. I should put it on my resume. I I really have won win the Nobel Prize for. I don't know. It's a thing. It's a thing. So Elizabeth, could your could your son laugh with you? Like, did you share the story while you were there? Oh well, there's no way I could not because they kept trying <laughs> to get the dog away from my urine bag, so my catheter bag. Yeah, I we had to laugh or you know pretend this wasn't happening, but it was clearly a thing. I think, you know, and that brings it back to, you know, all the fun many MSers have with urine. Mm. You go, you know, there were two times I was, this was years ago. <clears throat> I have peed on myself twice. Both of those times, though, it was nighttime and I was alone, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, there had to have been at least one stranger who saw that black girl and was like, did she just pee on herself and waddle home with urine down her jeans and her really cute boots? Yes, ma'am, sir, and or other pronoun. That 
was me. I literally could not hold it. I have a chronic illness. That's fun. I mean, you know, it's like, here we are with our like moments of just, I think it's a connecting point. You have to laugh. You have to laugh, right? A little oh, yeah. bit. Great. You know, because that happened to me. Oh, yeah. Girl, I've had two of those episodes this week. Yes. I think we should have an episode on you and I think we could have a great episode. Well, I got about... days and days and days of stories with you. Me too. I have great stories. We all probably have great stories. Yeah, those are mine too. And I those that, that really was a while ago. But I remember them. And I always think, because at the time I was living in the Bay Area and I was like, what if I was on the train? Like a packed train. Mm-hmm. And I just, what if I was on a packed train, y'all? What would I have done? What One time I- it happened when I was talking to the new president of this company I was working with that was walking by his office and he was like, hey, Kyle, come here for a second. I was on my way to the bathroom. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, I, I talked to him for as long as I could, but I started to go. I was like, all right, I'm out. And I just left. Uh, it's just what it is. We're a special bunch, aren't we? Mm-hmm. No doubt. No doubt. We've experienced some things. So cheers to that. Mm-hmm. Cheers, cheers indeed. To the sweet dog. See, we can laugh about that. See, yeah, we, but can, is, you know. we are amazing. I yeah. think we're amazing. The bowel <laughs> and bladder issues of NMS mm-hmm. and just some of the issues that are really hysterical. That in, episode in can be called Shitty Stories. Hey, I man. love that. I have so many, so many horrible, wonderful stories. Not horrible, it sounds horrible, but you know, we have to develop community because who else wants to hear our shitty stories? I really want to hear your shitty story. <laughs> I have a comedy can... routine out of them. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to talk yeah. about bladder issues and bowel issues. I've, yeah. I've had the most hysterical stories once. Um, I should talk about it, but I had to go to the bathroom. This is way long ago when I could walk. And um, I had to go ask my daughter-in-law if she could go with me to the bathroom because I needed her to balance me so that I could take my pants down. And um, so she was doing that. And some woman uh, came out and came into the bathroom bathroom we're having dinner at a restaurant and the um my daughter-in-law was on her knees helping me pull up my underwear and when um she was on her knees someone burst into the bathroom and assumed that we're having sex Mm. together Uh. and it was his I've never laughed so hard in my life. I, I, I thought it was, I think it's a great story if I was a, a good writer. It would be, I thought that was, now I want to have you share your, your, your stories. They're hysterical. Yes. Did they say anything to you? Like, oh, like. No, they rushed out, rushed out and I could tell she was, really upset that how are these people invading it happens our... more on I'm just to let her know <laughs> it happens <laughs> that's funny that is laughable so I'm just curious I'm I'm glad that you all can laugh at these um it brings me a lot of joy just to listen to it I can't even imagine some of these things but 
I'm curious, you know, you do have to laugh about it sometimes, as you say, but I think we must all get exhausted every once in a while. Because yes. uh, oh, yeah. Annie had said, you know, the only thing you control is yourself. And I'm thinking to myself, but, you know, Kyle has these two twin boys that get heavier and heavier, and it must be exhausting. Mm -hmm. So when you're really tired and you can't control yourself, how do you find your joy outside of, outside of laughing at yourself? Listening to music. That, yep, that part. And or doing things that quote unquote, don't have anything to do with MS, even though it's in my body. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I feel like I'm like an expert in compartmentalization, like, and that helps me to like, I literally am like frighteningly good sometimes at like putting things in boxes and just like, you know, not thinking about it. It's interesting. I thought of that when you said, Jessica, like I research everything, which I really admire. I reach your research nothing. I'm a doctor. I don't want to read anything. I don't want to talk about I don't want to look at those papers. I don't even want to know. I don't go there. I just like but sometimes I have the the privilege of not having to have it thrown in my face constantly because I can put it in a box. So I recognize that. Sometimes I just find joy in like having a a scotch, a stiff scotch. That's mm -hmm. okay. That's what That's that, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it like is, right? Like, like I'm gonna be in the Bay for four days. I was invited to this fantastic workshop through Photo Alliance. I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a weekend full of art stuff. I'm gonna see my friend's show. And to me, that's akin to just having a great scotch, like living your life. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And also, side note, I literally almost sent you this whole academic like research article on MS stuff, but I was like, I'm gonna bring it back. I don't think that she's gonna appreciate all of that reading. So I'm just gonna keep it to myself. Thank right you. Up. Thank you. <laughs> well done. It was good though, but it was a whole thing. I'm but like, can like, you just give me like the one sentence summary of what you learned? That's all I wanna know. I don't wanna read I that. I wouldn't even do that because I'll keep talking. <laughs> I don't, I don't I won't do that but it was well done I'll give them that it was like that was research research very well done I had questions but see I'm a friend I'm your co-panelist I was like I don't think Annie will want that in her life so I'm gonna just I mean it if go. it was to help you I would definitely delve in but I it doesn't call to me as something I'd like to do <laughs> I would do it for you Jessica is it good for me? I should work on the scotch drinking as opposed to the <laughs> I love scotch. I think it's great. I love exactly. it. And I love peanut butter. Peanut <laughs> butter good. and espresso Coffee. and scotch sounds great. Coffee. Mm -hmm. scotch. Coffee. Coffee is so good. Yeah. I just think that the joy, and maybe this could just be with where I'm at in my life. The joy is elsewhere, you know? I'm like, no, I don't have, hey, there's, for me, there's no joy in MS. It's just something that I happen to have, but there's joy in other things. And, you find, not, those, and you find those moments? Are you able to find those moments in other things? I am, yeah. I just think right now I'm just, I'm just, I am exhausted and I think I've exhausted myself with the worry and the kind of obsessively Googling things and then like looking for like academic articles and all of that. Have a scotch instead. <laughs> that's what, that's my yes. medical advice. Yes, I think. The doctor said it. <laughs> okay. I go to the gallery, do some preparations for the workshop stuff and I'm gonna go to a bar. Mm -hmm. have a, I, a, I love everything you're doing and I think we all need to have self-compassion because yeah. you need to google you need to search read the articles and then decide maybe it's not so good for me and yeah. I should go right. to my photography 
you know, I just want to learn how to be more compassionate to myself. Mm. Me too. I feel, I feel so compassionate to all of you. It's yeah. hard for me to be compassionate to myself, but yeah. I think that's why we need each other, why we need a community, a community, because it's so easy for me to be compassionate, Kyle, with you and all you're going through, mm -hmm. and Jessica and Annie. And so I, I would give anything for you, you guys. Aww. You're my family. Well, likewise. Yeah. By the way, someone in the comments, I saw it quickly. It said doctor's orders have a scotch. So whoever that was. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Now it's been memorialized. <laughs> right. And on that note, maybe I'll go have a scotch. I know. Um, uh, it's as usual. We've been on here for just about an hour. Um, oh. If you can believe it. Uh, and I always am like so entertained and learn so much at the same time. And I always want to say thank you for being as somebody who doesn't live with a chronic illness and who doesn't have a mess. I mean, the fact that you all are so transparent and it just, uh, I feel honored to always listen to your story. So um, until September, uh, that's it. Does anybody have any final thoughts before we sign off? That MS is given the gift of you guys. Mm -hmm. Again, not to be Pollyanna-ish, but. There are blessings, you know. Well, I'm gonna leave with like self-compassion and my, I'm gonna work on that till we meet again. Yeah. Yes. We, try. we should all try. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. no, and as not. always, you know, thank you to Kimberly Warner at Unfixed Media. So um, she supports us so much and helps us so much and we couldn't do anything without her. So, um, mm -hmm. okay. Are you guys ready to call it a night? Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, yeah thank you. And we appreciate it. Uh, uh, and uh, Elizabeth, I'll send you uh, another Zoom link in just a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, you guys. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.